Hey everybody, good morning. Um, it is early, your time, certainly very, very late, my time. Gosh, it is late. Children are asleep. Uh, certainly I don't get to uh, be there, which is a bummer. It would have been cool to go to London, but I get to be here, which is nice, uh, and I get to share with you a bunch of stuff that's going on around Azure. But, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I thought about putting together a bunch of slides, assembling a whole PowerPoint uh, you know, tour, but I wanted to show you some of the real things that I'm personally doing with Azure and spend most of the time talking about demos. So I really have just kind of one slide that I'll show you here, and then we'll kind of come back to that slide throughout the uh, the hour, if that's, if that's okay with everyone. Oh, and I'm Scott, by the way, in case there was any confusion, sorry. Uh, my name is Scott Hanselman. Uh, yeah, so this is the one of my most favorite slides and this is great because this is an oversimplification of Azure as all things are anytime you have any boxes and lines you're taking something really really complicated and breaking it down what I like about this particular slide and actually I'll even fix it in real time you see where it says websites that's now called web apps um, and mobile services is now called mobile apps what's nice about this is it just gives you a basic uh, stack and we're gonna start at the bottom and talk about Azure storage now a lot of the people who are watching may be familiar with Azure already but what I want to walk you through is how I learned it and how the things that I learned helped me get my head around how I would architect something so Azure storage right off the bat uh, one of the things that I found out kind of a silly thing to say was you know when you have uh, uh, a virtual machine in Azure, those VHDs, those disks, those virtual disks that the virtual machines talk to are sitting in storage. Seems obvious, but you know a lot of people don't really intellectualize that. So why is that significant? Well, what's interesting is that if we go here to the portal, uh, and we'll talk about the portal a little bit later uh, in detail, I'm going to click on storage accounts. And when you go, and this is my real account, by the way, I don't have like a, an account with free money in it. That's another interesting point. Because I don't actually, my job is not evangelism formally. I work on ASP.NET. Um, I don't have a, a free account that gets all the Azure money for free. So this is my real account with, um, with real money. And I'm really careful about using this account because I have real stuff running in here. And I don't want to necessarily uh, make a mistake and cost myself money. The reason that that's significant and the reason that I tell it to you is that almost everything that I do in Azure is uh, with the idea that I want to save as much money as possible. So I'll give you a, a number of comments about that as we go through. So for example, if I go in here and hit uh, Hansel Minutes uh, CDN and click on a container and then see my images container here and then we can see a bunch of images inside them. This is going to load about, I think it's four or five hundred images. See if these guys load. And uh, while that's happening, let's look at the URL for this. This is Hansel Minutes CDN. Oops, Hansel Minutes Blob CDN Windows. Let's say if I can go images. <clears throat> let me see here. Uh, JPEG. Let's see if this works. There you go. There's uh, Sarah Sweden, who I just had on my podcast. So there's a blob sitting in Azure at this location, okay? <clears throat> and I have each of my show episodes numbered, right? And they're just sitting there. So I can take any binary blob and throw it in Azure, and I can choose to make it available, in this case, publicly, over an HTTP endpoint, certainly privately, I can make those kinds of decisions. I can put access in front of it and whatnot. Looks like I've got so many that we're going to have a problem loading that. Oh, there they are. So you can see all the different blobs. I can click on each one of those blobs. I can see the specific URL for the blob and things like lease status and the MD5 hash and things like that. Um, I, of course, manage them, delete them, and whatnot. Now, this is all in the in the web interface. I'm not a huge fan of managing hundreds and hundreds of you know blobs inside of the web interface. What I like to use is a thing called Cloudberry Explorer. 
So I'll type in Cloudberry Explorer. This is a freeware from Cloudberry. It's fantastic. Uh, certainly you can upgrade and get more features. I've gone in here my storage settings here and put in my my binary and my uh, storage settings for this particular thing. So here are all of those files, right? So there's my most recent file, 477, and then of course there you go, there's the URL. So any blob that I want, I can pick up off my C drive and I can drop it in there. Okay. Everything in Azure is sitting on top of storage. Okay, everything sits on top of it. Now, here's where things get interesting. I can come down here to the start menu and I can go and say disk management. Okay, a lot of people don't realize that they can actually do this. And from disk management, there we go. I can go and say action create VHD. Okay, and I could go make a disk and I could throw a bunch of stuff uh, into that disk. Then I could take that disk and then upload it into an Azure storage container. Okay, uh, I've got lots of different containers up here. One of these, in fact, has a particular VHD uh, that I am thinking of. And uh, those VHDs then are what your VMs set on top of, right? So here's VM images, you see? and uh, we'll get a list of those VM images. Then from this, uh, you can mount those VMs. This is really interesting. Why this is interesting is because I've got, uh, when I first started using Azure, I put up a, a, a little newsletter. Now my newsletter is at sendy.hanselman.com and this is something that lets me send my kind of semi-monthly newsletter of wonderful things and I send it out to you know some numbers of hundreds of thousands of people and I use this this tool called Sendy it's a PHP application and uh, it expects that you're gonna do things on top of Amazon and uh, I didn't really know what I was doing there's, there's a number of my different newsletters right there I went and put together a little virtual machine okay so I'm gonna go here and say browse and I'll say virtual machines And here's all my VMs and I can go and actually filter them from here so I can go and see Sendy right there. So this is Sendy and then I'll talk about the database behind it in a little bit. So we click on Sendy. <clears throat> this is a little Linux VM and the only hint that you have that it's Linux is just that it says operating system Linux. That doesn't appear anywhere else. Azure doesn't go out of its way to warn you or treat Linux VMs any differently than Windows VMs which I like. Okay, this is a little one. Why is it little? It's little because I only uh, send these newsletters out every I don't know month or two. So it's it's busy for a day, and then it's chilling the rest of the time. So that's perfect for the cloud, right? I could have done this a number of ways, but I figured I'll keep it small, 28 days out of the year, and then you know out of the month rather, and then one day out of the month, you know, scale it up or whatever. You can see that actually it's doing basically nothing. It's chilling. Uh, I can close up essentials here. You can see a little disk read write action. I get all the stats and stuff. And you can see the pricing tier on this virtual machine is really, really low. I've got this actually on a shared core. You see it says a quarter of a core. That's their way of saying it's shared, right? I'm, other people are using the CPU. Um, it's really not, there you go, just did a little disk work there because I hit the, the website, in fact. Okay. Now this is a Linux VM. And I can uh, SSH into this machine. So I'll come out here to the command line and we'll go and we will SSH to Hanselman Sendy dot actually it's I think it's Scott is my username on this particular machine. Uh five seven five two seven one four. Let's see if I can remember where my port is. Alright, okay, cool. So now I am Oh, I forgot you can't do that. I'll hit top. Okay. You know, I don't like top. I like H top. It's prettier. Cool. So here is that Linux virtual machine that we're looking at right here. I'm, I'm SSH'd into this machine right now. And it's been up probably too long. I need to go and run update on it. And I probably will do, I'll do that right after we're done here. Um, but what's interesting about this is that it's really small. Now, some people really, in my opinion, overload um, not even overload, 
they think about capacity wrong when they're thinking about the cloud. They put stuff in way bigger virtual machines than they need. People will come into Azure, they'll go and they'll make a medium or a large, and they'll put one app on the thing. Okay, that's fine. They're treating the VM as a container, and they're putting an app inside it. That's probably appropriate. But do you really need three gigs and four cores for this little thing here? What I really need is it to be elastic. In my workload example, I need it to be up fast two or three days a month and the rest of the time, you know, accessible. It works fine. I can run my reports. I can run around inside of it. I can access it. It works, it works appropriately. And I can actually click on that and you can see Apache working in the background. You know, for one or two people, it works fine. This is, again, the tiniest, tiniest possible uh, virtual machine that I could possibly run. But I'm very happy with it. Notice that the memory here is just 200 out of 700. So arguably, I could probably even get away with a little bit less memory, a little bit more CPU. That would be uh, more appropriate. Now, this needed a MySQL database. And I was learning about Azure and learning about virtual machines and stuff. I could have put the MySQL on the same Linux virtual machine. But I was goofing around. I wanted to try something different. So I made another virtual machine, in this case, Hands one MySQL. Now this one is a Windows virtual machine. You can see this is Windows right there. The other way you can tell is that the connect button has lit up there. That will download an RDP file, a remote desktop file. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And it's going to download, and there it is, an RDP file, which I can now click on. It's going to send me off to remote into this machine. little warning. Let's see if it works. Nope, oh, here we go. So we are remoting into this VM right now. And this is running uh, MySQL for the back end of my, my little newsletter deal. So why am I showing you this? Well, when I first set this up, I, I felt that I was a little bit disappointed in the performance of this particular virtual machine, specifically the database. That really is, you know, that was the bottleneck for this this thing. So here is that MySQL deal. And there's the MySQL workbench. I can run that and go start task manager. We can go into performance and we can see same low memory and same, uh, you know, the tiniest possible VM, little tiny CPU. Okay. Why was I getting crappy performance though? I was pretty disappointed. The reason was that it was disk bound, right? It was working really hard and it was disk bound because what was on the C drive was the database, the database files, the operating system, uh, temp, you know, all this stuff was C drive bound. Now on the cloud, in the cloud generally, and I'm not speaking about Azure, I'm speaking generally about the cloud, there's this concept of IOPS, right? This, you know, well actually we can go and Google with Bing and look that up, right? IOPS defined. Okay, input, output, operations per second. It's actually IOPS, but that's not as fun to say. Okay, so IOPS, and now in most clouds, they usually talk about 350 or 500 IOPS on the low end. And that's what you get with, uh, with Azure on little tiny things. So let's go and say Azure IOPS uh, disk, you know, virtual machine, okay? Okay, this is important. You should know these things. This is like the basics. And again, if I'm boring you, I apologize, but uh, I hope you're getting your money's worth, right? So down here, there we go. Check this out. Basic tier, tiniest, tiniest virtual machine, right? Shows me the max sizes of the disks, terabyte and 20 gigs of temporary space, and the number of IOPS, 300 IOPS per disk, okay? Well, I had everything on the C drive. That's not cool. Turns out that, you know, I was thinking maybe I could get a better disk. I could get a better machine. How can I get that number higher? Well, the machine, it's actually really obvious. Remember how I was showing how I could go into disk management and make another disk? I can upload it. I can attach other disks. Well, there's no reason that I couldn't add another disk to this virtual machine. So I did. Um, and then what that did was, without costing me any more money, doubled my IOPS, 300 on the C drive, I'll talk about temporary in a section, 
and then I added this new 5 gig disk called MySQL Data. And I put all my data on there. I've also got Mongo running on that. Um, and there it is. So no additional cost other than just the pennies of storage that it takes to hold that. So why is that significant? Well, it turns out that each pricing tier for Azure has a max number of data disks. So the super tiny one lets me have my main disk and then one additional one. But if I were going to get, uh, you know, like a medium sized or a large, I can have four, eight, sixteen of these disks. And then that gives me that max IOPS per disk times the number of disks. So then you can write your application to be smart about that. Now one other thing, check this out, and this is going to come up a little bit later when I talk about Ruby. You've also got this temporary disk. So I've actually got three disks that I can be using for stuff. And if we go out to the command line here, and this is again on the, on the uh, Windows machine. See, there's that temp which is the C drive. Let's go down in there. Okay. And you can do tricky things with uh, with junctions. I think it's make link. Um, but you can also change that to point to here, the D drive, and get even more IOPS for free. Now, trick is these are persistent. This is not persistent. So that's really important to point out. And that's actually being shared with a bunch of other uh, machines. This, though, is another bunch of free IOPS for you to think about. So that was really significant. If I go back over to here, look at my virtual machine, okay? And I'm going to click on Essentials again. And by the way, this is a, uh, here's a, a funny little tip. Um, we're in the new Azure portal, of course. I'm using a Microsoft mouse. You'll notice that it's got the little scrolly as most mice do. So I can go scroll up and down action like this. See this? I like using the left and right scroll to scroll left and right in the panes. Uh, it's a lot less hassle than running around down here. So a little tip for you. Click on all settings. Click on disks. There's my main disk. I added this virtual disk right here. You see? You just say add existing. Okay. Now notice that it's saying the maximum number is already attached. I could scale this to a larger virtual machine and then add another disk. Uh, I also put caching to none because I'm running a database on this and I didn't want to take any risks. I could be serving static files off of it if I wanted to as well. Uh, I could also say attach new. It's warning me again, maximum number already attached. And then from here can go and generate that VHD directly. So you've got choices. You can make it locally, fill it up with stuff, upload it, attach it, which is what I did. Create it here certainly is a lot, uh, a lot easier. That VHD, of course, can also be set, downloaded, backed up, treated separately. If I was writing an application that was going to accept user uploads, those uploads don't necessarily have to go onto the C drive. If I'm doing everything in virtual machines, I can drop it on a VHD. But Azure Storage, right? This is one of the things people forget about when they're thinking about the cloud. That's an infinite disk that's out there. So when you're sitting at your office thinking about your workload, you probably have a machine under your desk right now. That's a VM. It might be the expense reporting system. It's something that you, you know, need to lift and shift up into the cloud. The easiest possible thing is to take that VM, that VHD, and upload it into Azure and then just run it. You can There are migration tools online that will tell you uh, how to do that. It's very, very simple. But literally, it's Hyper-V in the cloud. Okay, But that's only the most basic way of, of utilizing something like Azure. Uh, as we go through the, the talk today, I want to kind of raise the level a little bit. So we're talking about storage right now starting to get into virtual machines. When we start thinking about web apps and things like that, you're not necessarily going to want to pick up your uh, expense reporting system from a virtual machine and then just let it sit there and keep running as possible. Uh, you might want to have the user uploads like expense reporting and things like that be persisted in a database or be persist persisted in, in Azure storage. But then you're going to want to start thinking about reliability. You're going to take that a uh, bit of user data that upload from the user, again, images, receipts, whatever. Maybe put it in a queue, then have some other tool, uh, some other process be grabbing that out of the queue and then dropping that into storage. So step zero, lift and ship, lift and shift rather, 
then start uh, thinking about other ways to exploit stuff. But this was a really easy thing for me to fix. I mean, just by adding a single data disk, everything got better. Everything got faster. Okay? And that's in my uh, VM right now. But let's switch back to the home page. I'm going to take a slight detour because I want to point out one little thing. I, I really did not like the Azure portal, the new one, uh, when it first came out. But it's really getting nice. It's starting to, to grow on me. Uh, I'll sh show you a couple of things as we run around in here. Uh, little tricks. Uh, double click on the background. You can change the theme. Isn't that cool? So there's the dark theme. For, you know, for someone who's using Sublime or the dark theme in Visual Studio, like, oh, that's all I needed. And now I love the portal. But uh, for me, I wasn't keyboard friendly enough. So I talked to the team and pressured them. And if you go and you're in the portal, you hit shift question mark. We're getting keyboard shortcuts now. This is cool. This makes me so happy. Notice the J and K, little Vim action there. So from here, okay, I can go and say browse. And now I'm using the keyboard, not my mouse. Okay. Go and click on my SQL. Okay, from here, maybe click on CPU percentage. And then I can use uh, J and K and scroll around using my keyboard. I can hit then H to go back to the home. Notice that when I hit H, active blinked for a moment. I'll do that again. Let's go to browse. Uh, browse. Let's go to a blog. Now let's go to API apps. I'm going to hit H, watch active. See active just changed. I'm going to hit A. A is like, active is like control tab or alt tab for Azure. And now I'm using up and down. I can go and look at other things I was in the middle of doing. So literally A and then say, well, I was back on the MySQL, looking at the MySQL metrics. I'm back here, A, uh, create VM or browse. A, go back to the MySQL metric, check that out. I'm doing all this with the keyboard. So this this is making me uh, actually a little bit more happy than is appropriate. Uh, one other thing that's worth pointing out when you're over here looking at stuff that you want to hang on to, like remember the disk writes. I'm really paranoid about disk writes. I can actually right click on disk writes and hit pin to start board. And now the disk writes for the MySQL database are now here. I can then click on that. Uh, actually, I could even do more. I could click on it and hit uh, customize, change its size. If I was really, really wanted it to be really stupidly sized. Oh, wow. I could stick it over here. They're all going to run away. Okay. We'll pick this one up, put it back down there. And then I can hit done. I can even click edit chart and say, well, I don't want just disk percentage, but I also want CPU percentage uh, for the past week. And then that chart's going to update now boom just updated so I've got CPU and disk for the thing I'm worried about so this this all makes me deliriously happy uh, again you may have tried the, the the portal and not not really liked it but this is really sweet uh, there's also uh, the command bar and things like that we'll, we'll talk about a little bit later okay so that's there it's lovely also you can click on portal settings and change things like turning off animations and things like that if they if they bother you but don't don't uh, discount the portal quite yet. It's pretty fantastic. Virtual machines. Okay, so we're working our way up. So storage, Cloudberry Explorer, things that you can do with storage. Virtual machine disks sit on top of storage. I can go and say uh, new compute, and we'll go and we can pick you know virtual machines, and we know probably that you can do things like Ubuntu and Windows Server and things like that. Entire SharePoint data farm, you know, data farms all at once. Uh, but now if you go to Azure Marketplace, okay, and go to virtual machines, this makes me very happy. Check this out. Let's see if we can find Look at this. Minecraft server in Azure. This makes me <laughs> very happy. Um, also let's say I wanted uh da, da, da. what's else something else that's awesome. Yeah, see Chef. Oh, I think I can use a Barracuda in there. I don't know how to spell Barracuda. There he is, um, Drupal. Yeah, let's see. Oh, Ruby. Ruby stack. These are from Bitnami. This is fantastic. So there's a new Ruby stack. 
SQLite, Subversion, you know, nobody's perfect, uh, Apache, PHP, right there. So I can go and create this. Now, where these are coming from is the VM Depot. That is the same as this. From here, I can go and say Minecraft. Okay, I'm on Open Tech. Here's Minecraft in a box. You can see it says create a virtual machine or uh, deployment script. We'll look at deployment script in a second. If I click on uh, deployment, and it's going to say, well, go ahead and sign in. I'm going to sign in real quick. And, uh, oops, that's making a virtual machine. I don't want to do that. There we go. Deployment script, excuse me. I agree. West Europe, right? These commands here, I'm going to put those in Notepad. Those commands are the commands we would use from the Azure CLI. Now, let's do that. Let's go back over here. So, all the things that are happening in the portal are calling a backend resource management system. And I'm going to give you a couple of little cool secrets. Azure at the command line is a Node.js open source application. It's got ASCII art, which is yummy, that you can install by saying npm install Azure CLI dash dash G. You can do this Mac, Linux, whatever. I love this. A lot of people like the, Power, the PowerShell one. I like uh, this one. This one's nice because it's cross-platform. So I can say Azure uh, VM list. It's actually Azure noun verb. Okay, so Azure noun verb, Azure VM list. I'm going to go and call that back end and hopefully give me a list of those virtual machines. There it is. There's my sendy. Okay, Azure VM, Hanselman, MySQL. Uh, is it Hanselman VM? Let's see. If you don't know the name, if you don't know the thing you want to call, just type Han Azure VM. There we go. Azure VM disk list Hanselman uh, MySQL. MySQL. It's really intuitive. Like it, it just took me two seconds to remember how to do this. Easy for you all as well. Boom, and there we go. Those are the same two disks that we saw in in uh, Azure. Now check this out. Dash dash JSON. So we're going to get an idea of what the back end web services look like. See? So there's an example of kind of the JSON of that thing. Now, see it says Media Link. We talked about how we can access uh, you know, JPEGs, blobs, things like that in Azure Storage. Here is that VHD. Now, this is not publicly available, and this is being done as what's called a block piece of Azure Storage, not a blob, because we can, uh, we can seek randomly around it as opposed to forward only and downloading it. You can also see there the second disk, that little disk that I put up there, that's my D drive, right? I can access all of that. And this is really important to remember is that nothing is a black box. And I keep saying this over and over again. We want to make sure that you have complete, full control over anything that's going on in Azure. And if there is a black box, you know, tell someone about it and we'll try to solve that. So Azure VM disk list, Azure VM list, dash dash JSON. You can do this dash dash JSON trick on, uh, on any command. Azure noun verb, dash dash JSON, bunch of VMs, port numbers, and good stuff like that. Okay. This command here says Azure VM create, pass in a DNS, DNS prefix. Okay. Then this is the name or the identifier for that Minecraft server. And then the location, West Europe, username, and then of course if you're doing Linux, you always have to say dash SSH. Then this is a second command here to go and say VM endpoint create. And this maps public to private ports. So this is saying public, you know, I could say public 1345 is going to go to the private 22 for SSHing. This identifier copies the VHD from the storage area of the VM open, you know, the open tech, the Microsoft open technologies people who made this, this VHD copies it from their storage into my storage. And it copies specifically an image that's been prepped, that's been prepped and, and ready to go. 
we can do this ourselves. So check this out. If I go and search for Hanselman Linux Web Farm, this is why you should have a blog. Everyone should have a blog so you can go and search your brain later. Uh, I literally forget stuff all the time and I search my blog because I remember I did that once. So anytime you do anything interesting, write it down. Very, very important. This was me setting up a Linux VM. So I went and I set up an Ubuntu server, okay, and I, you know, named it blah, 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 blah. Then I went on this server. I put on Apache. I put on PHP. I was getting it ready. I was testing it, okay, prepping, putting whatever I want on this machine. You can do this with Windows too. I'm just using Linux as an example. Okay, accessed it. It works, okay. So on Windows, there's a thing called sysprep. Sysprep prepares the system to be used. It's a templating technique. Linux has that also when they're running on Azure. It's called the Windows Azure Agent, WA Agent. So you say sudo WA Agent deprovision. And know what it does? See, clears out host key pairs, just cleans up the name server, removes all the leases, turns off the root password. It makes this a template. So it takes your VHD and preps it, shuts it down, and says, all right, this is a template, and I can go and make another one. Same thing as running sysprep, except this is Linux. Now, shut it down and then capture it. Azure VM capture. Let's go back over here and let's grab, let's look at one of my VMs. I was browsing a VM here. Okay, virtual machine. My SQL, my SQL is the Windows one. My Sendy is the Linux one. See this capture button right there? Same thing. That's going to call the same APIs. So I just want to point that out. If you have it prepped, you can capture it. Okay? Then I can go and say Azure VM create, name of new VM or name of a cloud area, from this template. So this is me making another virtual machine from a template. Okay? This means that I can then go and make n number of them. So here I am making one, two, three web farms. Okay. When I go over to VM Depot, all they're doing is they've got VHDs that they're allowed to copy from their storage into my storage. When you go file new project, or not file new project, when you go new uh, compute virtual machine in the Azure portal, same kind of thing. Template comes over. That's how we keep those templates up to date. Uh, when there was a, uh, a bug I think it was a Heartbleed or one of those evil bugs. We went and uh, updated all the Linux images to make sure that those were getting updated. Um, so now certainly once you've made your virtual machine, it's like a puppy. It's your job to keep it alive and to keep it maintained. Uh, but the images, though, will make sure that those are nice. So then that lives in my images. Now let me see if I can remember where that is here. Compute, Marketplace... There was a spa. Ah, browse VM images. And I think my image will be in, no? I'll have to figure out where that is. Because I know that in the new portal, I can go and say new compute. And I can make a virtual machine from my existing virtual machine. It just took me a while to uh, to find that. What is it called? I called it Hanselman Linux Web Forum. Let's see if it's in there. Yeah. I'll have to figure out where that is because I know it's in here somewhere. The marketplace is huge. Browse. See, now you're making me wonder where it was. Hmm. I'll go looking for it in a little bit. But in the original uh, Azure portal. It was under my images. It's somewhere in there as well in uh, in the new one. Okay. So let's go back here. So everything sits on Azure storage. It's your infinite disk in the sky. Virtual machines, again, sitting on top of Azure storage. Virtual machines can be Linux. They can be Mac. Uh, I mean, they can be Linux. They can be Windows. They can be whatever. Worker roles are uh, like a stateless kind of a virtual machine. It's a virtual machine that could go away at any moment. The way that I've been explaining that to people uh, mostly is like this. So virtual machines, you manage them, 
uh, you, the operating system, like I said, you have to run the updates, but you can do anything you want. You can go nuts. You have full control. We're going to talk about websites in a little bit. Websites platform as a service. Cloud apps sit in the middle. And the, the, the real issue is that with cloud apps, it is a virtual machine. You can do anything that you want to it, but Azure will manage the update. And that's why it's stateless. It could go away at any moment. But because we have storage, you put all of your things in storage, it doesn't matter so much if your virtual machine disappears at some point. And by disappears, I mean comes and goes. Uh, you, you scale up and add more virtual machines. You scale down, and they go away. Let's talk about websites, because that's what I think is the sweet spot. As a web person, I am a fan. So let's go, and we can say new web app okay now there's a marketplace for this too so I can pick Umbraco or Joomla or whatever okay but I can make a web app from here I can pick my plan my pricing plan I have a plan in uh, West US that I like to use and then I can just say you know my foo foo site okay notice that pin to start board is there already I'm gonna hit pin so that's starting to happen and being created. And notifications is there, you see. I can go and do other stuff and poke around, and they'll let me know when that's done, that web application is being done. But here's the cool part. We can make these from the command line, just like we could make virtual machines. So let's see what I got on my desktop. Okay, I've got a, vir I've got a disk on my desktop. Uh, not a disk, rather, a uh, website. Okay, so here's my website. I'm going to say Azure Site Create My Tech Days UK dash dash location West US blasphemy I know dash dash git. Okay. Now that oops unknown as an unknown does it dash dash location? I never know. I always thought that was kind of weird. It should be one dash. Okay. Getting locations, getting sites, making sure that the name is appropriate. Okay. My Tech Days UK is appropriate. Don't hit it right now because you'll mess up my deployment. Getting user information. Okay. Username, Scott. And then it says, a new remote has been added to your local Git repo. It called Git init right here. So if I say Git remote show, see, there's one called Azure. Okay. To the URL. Okay, we'll talk about that in a little bit. This one got made. Totally different site. I can click on this. And this is the default thing. Now from here, Git Push, FTP, Visual Studio Online, whatever. I can go and say Azure Site Delete My Fufu Site from here or from here, doesn't matter. I'll get rid of that one, Un unpin that. Are you sure? Sure, what? Oops. Try it again. Why not? There we go. So that's going to go away. Now, this one here is called My Tech Days, right? Let's go and take a look. Go look at our web apps. There it is, my Tech Days UK. Oops. Oh, check my blood sugar here. There we go. All right. So this exists. Now, scroll down a little bit. It says no deployment found. Okay. No deployment found. We're going to go here and we're going to say git add, you know, everything git commit uh, tech days rocks git push uh, it doesn't look right sure master let's find out if that looks right or not
Okay, pushing that up. There we go, running deployment. Everything that says remote is coming from up there. Now look, see in the background, the deployment just changed. See it says receiving changes. Now I could have pushed this from, you know, whatever. There's lots of ways to have done this. I just like, you know, I like Git. It says receiving changes. Pending. See? Active. Azure site browse. Oops, not browser, browse. That will take find out where the current site is, the, where the current uh, where the current folder's active site is from the Git repo, and then launch it. So then this is now that site. Now what's fun about this is this is not just a site, but it's also HTML, classic ASP, because why the heck not? right? Who knows? ASP.NET, Node.js, Razor, PHP. Oops, what is this? It is magic. Okay, what am I doing here? I'm going to type code. I'm going to bring up Visual Studio Code. I think it's code, uh, code dot. It is magic. What is that about? Okay, we don't want that there. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that. Now notice that I'm using Visual Studio Code. I can go in here, type in a mistake, commit that, okay. Come out the command line, git push Azure master. Switch back over here. See that deployment. Mistake, just switched, okay. Go back into our app, and they were fixed, right? And I can be over here, look at my deployments, switch between them, actually even see the log all the way down to there, see? Now, I don't have to think about the virtual machine, and a lot of discussion has been made about this in the context of you know, yeah, with, with PaaS and web, web apps, you don't have to think about it. But I, I think you do want to think about it, okay? So, and you can. And this is what's so great about this. You see right there, it says console. Okay, I want to make sure you're clear where I'm at. I am on the website we just made, My Tech Days UK. Click on that. Here we've got, you know, essentials. Close that up. There's our requests, pricing tier and all that. I can click on console. I'm in Chrome in this instance. Check this out. People don't realize that you can do this kind of stuff. I'm in here, right? I have Git. I can I can mess around and edit this. I can uh, delete things, check on stuff. I can see what's inside of Hello JS. You know, if I needed to check on something, that's a little PowerShell. I can click on Processes. And this is going to go and call some back-end stuff. And I can see Node running. I can see PHP running. Click on that. Look at this. Process details of PHP itself. What file path it's coming out of. Digging deeper. The handles that it's got open. This is the best part. Modules. Because how often have you been in production and said, well, wait a second. Uh, you know, is that the right version? of the, um, uh, is that the right version of this, you know, this .NET DLL? I don't know if that'll work with PHP, but let's go look at it with, uh, let's see if we can find out a version of like a .NET DLL maybe. I'll tell them about that. Now that looks like a bug. So this is good. Since this is all being seen uh, like this, people who are working on the, the portal will, will feel sad that uh, there's some weird JavaScript. Yeah, that's it looks like that's JavaScript. There's some goo in there. What you should see here is, you know, like there we go. That's what I want to see. Oh, that's a weird one. Look at that. It does work. There's just some JavaScript ism there. 
but look here. So duh, 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 system dot whatever, right? Oh, I'm like, oh, that's the wrong version of runtime caching or whatever. And then click on that and then get the details and say, how did that file get up there? So this is what I think is so exciting about this particular portal and how far we can get. I'm using the hotkeys right now. Web apps, how much it costs, rules, logs, all that kind of stuff. But then all the way down to call stacks and versions and things like that. Now I'm going to close each of these. Let me go ahead and look and see. Close blade is uh, the hashtag, which is actually intuitive because in Gmail that is delete. So hit the hash and uh, delete those. Okay. Hash, hash. Okay. Now streaming logs is a pretty useful thing as well. Let's talk about that. I don't have any streaming logs in this particular app and I'm going to go ahead and delete this one. But I do have an app that is called Logging Test. So let's go to all my resources and put in Logging. Logging Test. And this particular app is stopped. See right there at the top. I'm going to hit Start. And we're going to turn that one on. And this is an ASP.NET app that has a little bit of logging enabled. Okay. We'll close these other things. Okay. So here's logging test. Maybe this isn't what I thought it was. Ooh, this will be fun. Let's find out what this is. Logging test .net. So this is interesting. I can go and figure out, debug this if I want to. What I wanted to do was I wanted to come out to the command line and I wanted to type Azure site log tail logging test and connect to the streaming logs of this particular site. Okay. And then hit that a couple of times and I was hoping to see log information here. But it looks like something else is wrong. Maybe I deleted this uh, a while back. So how can I figure this out? Well, I can go and poke around, but one way would be to hit all settings. And I think I can turn on, is it app settings? And let's go into, yeah, see, this is where you turn on your remote debugging and all that kind of stuff, okay? Always on. You know, why don't we deploy a new website up there? That would be an interesting idea. Let's do that. Let's go to Visual Studio. We'll open up another one. We're going off script. He's freaking out, everybody. What's happening? No, it'll be fine. Don't worry. All right, let's get a version of Visual Studio going up here. And we'll go and we'll file new project. ASP.NET, MVC. Now here, I have host in the cloud enabled, you know, clicked already. But uh, I could go and from Visual Studio host that in the cloud. We're not going to do that. And this will just be a little local app, and we're going to add logging to it and then push it up there. Let's see, git. Okay, all right. And here we're going to go and add some uh, NuGet packages to the app. All right. While that's happening, I'm going to go into the home controller. And I'm going to say system.diagnostics.trace. Right line. There we go. This is bad. Just um, dot diagnostics dot trace dot. Let's try that. Okay, and I'm going to right click, and I'm going to say publish. And here I can say publish target. Okay. Now because I've signed into Azure from 
Visual Studio, it's going to go and call again those same backend systems. Get me a list of web apps, of which I think we named it Logging Test, will be in that list. And I'll pick that and we'll deploy this app up into there. Okay. Logging test. Okay. Now, it downloaded the published settings, put them into Visual Studio. I could have clicked here, get published profile, and done that myself. So I want to show that you can do these things in both ways. Okay. Publish. Start web deploy. Now, again, FTP is an option. Git is an option. In this case, we're going to go and do a web deploy from Visual Studio. Uh, even though I use Git, totally up to you. Web deploy is nice because it lets you do diffs and send up just a little bit that you need. The build happens here rather than up there. So there's choices. Okay, so that application is firing up in the cloud. So there's my app. So now I actually have an app. And let's make sure that logging is turned on. Application settings. Let me forget about this. Where does this part go? Diagnostics logs. This is another thing. Azure is so big now. You know what I'm saying? Look what happened. I hit all settings. I went to application settings. I went looking for logging. It seemed like the right place to look. It wasn't there. I can hit search settings, type log. Troubleshoot's nice too, by the way. This is great. You can go and collect these diagnostics and stuff. People don't use this stuff enough. Uh, I'm going to go, oh yeah, also things like live traffic. We'll come back. Diagnostics logs, application logging, web server logging, detailed error message. I can turn that stuff on. We'll say verbose. Hit save. You can decide how you want to do that. Success. Go and run Logtail again. We'll see if this works. Hopefully it works. If it doesn't, I'll be sad for a few minutes. But then I'll get over it. Yep. And there's my verbose log. That log there. Now I've connected to it from here inside of the DOS prompt. But I want to make sure that you understand there's options. Let's switch back over to Azure. Okay. Uh, when I say Azure, I mean the portal. Close this up. Scroll down. Streaming logs. So here I am in the portal. I've got, there it is again, see? I can, I don't have to do that in the command line. But notice also I turn web server logging on. So there's the actual HTTP get with all of the information that's being passed in. Watch. Refresh, refresh, refresh. You see? So I'm getting all of that. Now, this is in the portal. This is in the command line. I can also, because why not, go over here, open up Azure, open up web apps. Okay, we're hitting refresh now. This is making that back-end call. Now, I have two subscriptions, so that's why you're seeing more. See, it's this logging test right there. Right-click, view streaming logs. Do you look familiar? Huh? Huh? Now I've got the logs in the production system that I'm attached to the streaming log service inside of, in this case, Visual Studio. In this case, the command line. And here, inside of uh, the Azure portal. All lovely stuff. I can also log into things like this app service support here and go and see live diagnoses and things like that as well. Super fun stuff. Okay. Azure Storage Virtual Machines. By the way, those logs can be persisted to Azure Storage Web Apps. Now, web jobs are sidecar applications that run literally like you have a motorcycle and then you have the sidecar. So I've got a web job that goes and runs my blood sugar. I've got a site called uh, Hansel Sugars that is getting information from my blood sugar system right here, this blood sugar thing right here. And Hansel Sugars has a 
web job that is going and bringing data down from another service. You can see this nice sawtooth pattern there. Okay. And that is running separately from the website. So we can go and see that. See, I just type job, web jobs. You see how comfortably I'm moving around inside of the portal as well? That's another important thing. There it is. It's a continuous web job. And I can go and see the logs for that if I want to. So I'm logging into that particular sidecar. Notice the URL. I'm not on the website. I'm on the sidecar site. Okay. SCM is source control management. And here's my web jobs dashboard. Now, this web job happens to be written in Node.js. Could be written in PowerShell, batch file, whatever. And there's my blood sugar. Okay. Web jobs still running. So I can see all of this information here. Those web jobs sitting on top of and living within the context of web apps. Now, as we close up here, here's where it gets really complicated and interesting. There's going to be soon even more choices on what you can do. So we saw virtual machines, we saw web apps, we saw how I can look at the processes in the web app, I can remote desktop into a Windows virtual machine, I can SSH into a Linux virtual machine, all that's lovely. But Docker, what about Docker, right? Docker are containers. Now, sim I, I, this isn't a Docker presentation, but simply stated, if I've got that tiny little 10 meg PHP app sitting inside of a 5 gig VHD, that's a lot of VHD, a lot of virtual machine for a small, uh, for a small web application. Does it really need that level of, of, of that, that weight? Does it really need that much... Um, you know, security and isolation. Why it just needs to be in a container and it needs to be deployable in a reliable way. Docker, you know, will provide that. So here is a uh, ASP.NET 5 application. Okay. And within this application, I've installed the, uh, within this Visual Studio, I've installed the Docker tools preview. Okay. I can go in here now and the tools have added a Docker file. Take a look at this Docker file. This Docker file has said, this is like the recipe, the recipe for the Docker. It says, we're going to use ASP.NET Beta 4's Docker file. We're going to add everything into the folder called app. This is going to be the name of the project. And then the entry point, the thing that we're going to run in this case is DNX, and then the container port of this Docker. Then we include shell scripts. This is an actual Linux shell script or PowerShell scripts for you to deploy these, or even better. And by the way, I'm going to go ahead and just run this locally to make sure you believe me, because I figure by now you can't trust anything I say. So here is my ASP.NET 5 application. There you go. Running locally on IIS Express. Now, though, I can right-click and hit Publish. Web apps. I'm sure we saw that before. Docker containers virtual machines that have Docker on them. Now, let's rewind for a second. I'm going to run back over here, and I'm going to go and say browse, and we're going to go and grab a virtual machine, and we'll grab uh, Hansel Docker. Well, that's, actually, this one that is not Docker. Let's grab my original Linux VM that we showed at the very, very beginning. I'm going to hit on all settings. And I'm going to hit on, I believe it's called extensions. Here we go. Extensions. Ah, I don't have the VM agent on this machine. Let me try another one. <coughs> Settings. Extensions. Add. Docker. Boom. This is where you add Chef and Docker and Datadog and things like that. Okay. So you can add Docker to your VM. From here, we'll inject the Docker daemon into the VM. Okay, so I've got Docker running on Hansel Docker. Okay, from Visual Studio, I can go and publish to that container. Okay, so I've published this virtual machine, and I can come out to the command line, and if I remember correctly, this Docker machine, do, 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 where is this one? This is called... Uh, here we go to Hanselman 
TikToker. Listen again, remember I told you how to have a blog, you guys. Tell them a blog. And so Docker. I'm gonna grab that's the port I wanted to have. Okay, I'm gonna say Docker, the command line. So I've actually this is the Docker command line. Okay. Docker dash H for host paste. I'm gonna say PS dash A for all of them. Oop, and I need to go dash TLS. Is it dash dash TLS? TLS verify. Look at me. Dash dash. There we go. So I just said PS. PS is, you know, get processes. Those are the Docker uh, containers that are running right now. And it looks like this one here, Nostalgic Boar, is up and running right now. So let's hit Hansel Docker. And if that's still running, yep, there it is. So that is the same exact application, the ASP.NET 5 application, running now in Linux in Docker. Now it's preview, but I want you to think about all of these tools and all of the stuff that we have available to us in Azure and all the possibilities of how these, these Lego bits are going to snap together and how much fun we are going to have doing it. Uh, and I've actually gone over on my time, and I'm sorry. But I hope you have a blast uh, enjoying all the great content that we've got all day long on Tech Days UK. And thank you so much uh, for having me. Bye.